I am Rebecca Michael. I am Daniel Ratcliffe. And this is the Real Empowerment Podcast. And we have an interesting topic today. Um, it came out of um, a podcast many moons ago. And um, the, the discussion after the, the podcast was, you know, you said something that, that kind of really resonated with me. And I think we need to talk about it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it was actually Rebecca Hall who has come to us twice already so she's one of our repeat offenders yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she's coming she she presented this idea to me so do you want to present it sure okay i'd love to so let's see i think it was in the summer of 2019 um rebecca daniel l and chris did a podcast love is love Okay. And one of the things they touched on in this podcast that really spoke to me was not being disabled enough. Crazy, right? right. <laughs> that you're not disabled enough. However, for the disabled community, it is very much so a real theme that we encounter. Mm-hmm. Which is true. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then within the little sex mm-hmm. of SECT. Mm-hmm. Sex. I sex. thought you said sex. I was um, like, <laughs> we're in a little sex zone cast to have this conversation right, right. now. <laughs> right? Not to clarify because of last week. <laughs> All the little different categories that we have within disability community. We have deaf community. We have autistic community. We have blind community. We have the spoony community. All these different categories. And there very much is this kind of like gatekeeperiness mm-hmm. that happens so within those. Let's backtrack a second. Who are you? <laughs> Who am I? Someone didn't introduce themselves. I'm Elle. <laughs> I'm Elle Livingkin. I'm a community like... advocacy coordinator, and I'm frequently on the podcast. Yes. Again, so I forget to introduce ones. myself. Definitely. And then we also have... I'm Amber Nicole Wolf. Uh, I'm the advocacy intern at the Independence Center. Very exciting. I'm also autistic. Heck yes. yes. <laughs> exactly. And the beauty That's of... the response we want. Autistic yeah. and proud. Yes. yes. The beauty of Amber Nicole is not just because Aww. just because she's <laughs> with us and she has this disability that will only just enhance our our community, but she also is a student of sign language. I am studying to be a sign language interpreter. Yes, <laughs> and so she also provides access, which is amazing too. Aww. So I love the vehicle of access that you provide. So wow, I'm honored. <laughs> I, I love Thank the you. dynamics there of like autistic mm-hmm. interpreter. Yeah, Heck yes, yeah. Exactly. We need more of that. Yes, we need that representation. Yes, so, and understanding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so going back to Rebecca's initial, you know light bulb moment of you guys really should talk about that more because it actually happens on a regular basis it also is um it came out of the love is love podcast um love is love pride and intersections um that chris robertson and l came and talked to daniel and i about pride and and you know what how pride got started and then also you know the 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 discrimination within marginalized groups because there are marginalized groups within a marginalized group we already know that um but it isn't talked about enough and we don't talk about it enough saying you know i'm not disabled enough within within my community so you're only like partially an ally and understood uh, talked about enough to understand why people are doing that right and that people aren't gatekeeping with the intent to be mean but they're gatekeeping because they've experienced trauma and discrimination themselves right and so it's reaction and we don't talk about it enough within the communities to understand like hey i'm dealing with my own stuff and this person is also dealing with stuff and let's humanize each other instead it's let's label people and call them not enough of whatever identity it is and right. and have this like growth Going fear towards them and then keep them out of our community. Right. Exactly. And it's harmful on all the levels. Right. Exactly. Because if you don't know Daniel enough, you're very sighted. Passing-ish. Passing-ish. I am? Yes. <laughs> you I, are. You mean I don't look blind? <laughs> no, not at all. Whoa. There's, there's yeah. that. You, you look blind. You look deaf. You look autistic. Mm. That's also a, a very good label that the disability community and the, and yeah. the able community is very good yes. at slapping on people. Stereotypes. Yes. Um, but truly, you don't. You don't. You're. I wouldn't think that, that, that you were blind because hmm. what are the tools of, of a blind person to get around? White their feet. 
a white cane. Oh, I was going very. <laughs> <laughs> Had a Daniel moment. Yes, I did like no. your answer, yeah. feet though. Yeah, yeah feet. I, I represent a population of individuals that are blind. I say blind. Some people prefer the term visually impaired or low mm-hmm. vision. I, I represent a population of individuals that don't really do typically what society would expect an individual that is quote unquote blind to do. Right. Like, I don't use a white cane. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely go and play basketball. <laughs> like I go hunting <laughs> and Sweet. things of you that nature. Don't drive though, right? Uh, we just That's did a, a whole podcast about level that. Conversation. <laughs> we'll see in a couple of weeks. I think yeah. I got it. I think I got it. We were totally we test excited it. to try. <laughs> I think I got it in on that with one. my horrified face. <laughs> yeah, but um, I, I definitely don't present. I guess I, I do not present as what some would stereotypically believe to be mm-hmm. a blind mm-hmm. person. Mm-hmm. Right. And right. things that make you visu- visibly blind, right. like right. the white cane, right. the guide dog, yeah, right, et cetera. Definitely. So you guys are all touching on an underlying topic here, which is how social media, pop culture, movies, mm-hmm. book, how they portray yes. disabled mm-hmm. communities right. mm-hmm. is always, yeah. I personally feel, on the extreme. Mm-hmm. Oh, it is. Yeah. It truly really is. Mm-hmm. So then you are marketing this mm-hmm. to an abled community. Yes. Yeah. And that is the impression they are left with. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, being blind means you have to have a cane. Right. You yes. can't play basketball. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. And this it spills over. Just the, the power of media, yeah. period. Um, the, the control that they have to kind of create the idea of what an image of someone is, it's dangerous uh, because it spills over from not just a uh, ability or disability standpoint, but even down into gender, even mm-hmm. down into mm-hmm. race, mm-hmm. Uh, where if the masses do not place a certain type of person in position to be seen by the public, it kind of gets swept under the rug and put in the back room. Um Hence, individuals that use wheelchairs. How many leading actors or actresses yep. have we had that use a wheelchair? Yep. Right. None, we just had a you know. woman who won a Broadway Emmy thing, whatever uh, Tony. the award is. Yes. Tony. Yes. <laughs> that thing. Yeah, she, won, she won the Emmy? Broadway like award. Yeah, Broadway she's a wheelchair user. She's this cute little white blonde lady. She's nice. adorable. You know who I'm talking about? No, I have no I idea. Do. She's I awesome. Allie's Allie's Stroker or something. That's she's nice. Bomb. Yes, nice. but absolutely right. right. We don't have we a lot more of that, that representation. Mm-hmm. And when we do finally have the representation, yeah. it's very stigmatized. Or it's yeah. covered. Like Johnny Depp is yes. legally blind. Mm-hmm. But you wouldn't know that from watching. Really? A movie, yes. yeah. Interesting. And he's all, he's on the spectrum, that. too. Yeah. No way. Yep. But that's never discussed. Yes. And that's what's really surprising to me is that is okay. we have this huge community that could easily benefit from this is what a disabled person actually does look like mm-hmm. versus throwing the extreme out there. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, we have our universal um, identify, uh, identifier of disability, which is the wheelchair dude. And that's <laughs> fine. I right. mean, great that they have a symbol for us. Mm-hmm. But it, it that's only 10% of the disability right. community. Yep. And to really understand, you know, there's hidden disabilities mm-hmm. of of that is on the disability spectrum. Yep. Not every mobility disability uses a wheelchair. That's true. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what I think is going to be really important about our conversations, because we'll have a couple of them um, over the course of a couple of months, but, you know, understanding what what is disability and then also why you're not considered disabled enough Mm -hmm. because at the federal government you may not be disabled enough Mm -hmm. um in order to get benefits but you don't but you're too disabled to work Mm -hmm. and so you're stuck in this limbo yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. well but the benefits man says (laughs) if the feds will not or so if social security denies you (laughs) Call Daniel. Call Daniel. <laughs> um, we can possibly work at getting you approved by the state to mm-hmm. be considered disabled. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, which doesn't come with a cash benefit, but it definitely explains a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. In the sense of, yes, I am an individual that lives with a disability. <laughs> I am disabled, determined by the state. I am eligible for state programs that require a disability right. determination. Right. right. And there are a number of programs that, that, that are are opened 
once that determination is made. Yeah. So this is interesting. We've got the talking about we've got the talking about from the federal and benefits standpoint, yep. and then we've got the stigmatized view from media, yes. including mm-hmm. social media, right. and then we have the actual community that lies somewhere in between that. Do you? to all of the other four disabled individuals <laughs> here with me today. Do you feel like those that dichotomy almost creates another binary that mm-hmm. oppresses us within the community and the community kind of buys into this this binary aspect of what disabled is um, and that just reinforces more of those problems and gatekeeping within our community? Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. In oh, my experience, yes. as far as like people talking about one or the other, um, when people use functioning labels to oh. describe autism, um, it just oh, you're so high that functioning. Binary. Yeah, you're, oh, you're, low oh, you're functioning. so high functioning. You don't need any support, and yeah. you don't look autistic. You're not disabled right. enough, or low functioning. They just totally keep you aside. They don't even pay attention to yep. you, and they're yeah. like, "Oh, your life isn't worth living." Mm-hmm. And both right. of those are e- are horrible things. And then let me and speak for my quote unquote low functioning autistic exactly. child, so I you're, can get pats on the back. Exactly, <laughs> and they'll say you're too high functioning to speak for yourself or right. on behalf yep. of the community. And yes. then they don't let the quote unquote what they call low functioning people do that either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, really, they're just trying to shut us all up. I guess. Yes. But, <laughs> yes. But yeah. And so, in reality, like we were talking about in media, they portray. Um, all sorts of disability in a very specific, very, like, almost severe way, and it's never really accurate to how disability looks in everyday life, and I think it's really important to have conversations like this and to say, like, this is actually what it is like to be disabled every day, not just to watch Rain Man. Right? Right. Right. (laughs) Exactly. uh, That movie was awesome. Uh, (laughs) Although a non-disabled person playing a disabled person. Hey, man, did a wonderful job. (laughs) It did. Sort of like uh, What's Eating Gilbert Gilbert Grape? Yeah. Man, I was like in it. I'm sorry, but guys. again, <laughs> I have my moment. I'm a, I love no, movies. No, they, they, I mean, they're historically important movies if we think about, and especially yeah. at the times that both of those were released, the yeah. early mm-hmm. '90s. And you think yeah. about that the ADA was passed yes. in 1990, and then we have some of these movies coming mm-hmm. out, um, non-disabled actors playing disabled characters, yes. Yes. and. Yep. Much of the disability community has called it Crip Face. Much of the black community has said, please don't call it that. Because yeah, yeah. that's a whole different right. Yeah. Right. A different level. Right. But the understanding, yeah. still with the understanding <laughs> that, and absolutely acknowledging that we shouldn't call it that because of yeah. the very big yeah. difference between blackface and that. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also understanding that it's still a problem. Yeah. Right. right. They're very different and tense. Right. Um, but at the same time, it's still an issue that non disabled actors, and I feel like it, that non disabled actors playing those severely disabled stereotyped characters fuels into the paranoia around accepting disabled people truly right. into mm-hmm. our society as well as the stigma mm-hmm. <clears throat> Like Rain Man, right? Like he was a very stereotyped autistic character. And so people get that idea of this is what autism looks like. And I'm also autistic. And my autism looks very different than that. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? My autism looks like I have meltdowns. I have sensory issues. I have social um, interaction things that I've had to learn throughout my life. I've gone through therapy my whole childhood. Mm -hmm. And that's what my autism looks like. Excuse me, but it will never look like Rain Man, mm-hmm. right. right? And 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 then you get you go out with people and you interact with them, and they're like, "There's no way you could be autistic." <laughs> oh, I get it. Like, I get it. I'm so autistic. <laughs> right. That's my yeah. partner. Yes. Exactly. Yes. I literally yeah. get that every time I meet a new person. Yes. Almost. It's, yes. You know, every you time. Don't that brings yeah. yeah. Such an important point because in that pop media culture not only are disabled people watching and trying to learn about themselves and discovering their own Mm -hmm. identity sometimes even before they're introduced to their own disabled community to realize that it really is a spectrum then when a disabled person is meeting or interacting with an able person (coughs) an able person then already has a label they Mm -hmm. already have you know a list of a b z whatever it is Mm of oh you don't fit mm-hmm. into this little right. nice box or category. That's the only box they've ever seen. Exactly. exactly. Mm-hmm. They've never been exposed to the fact that right. it is a spectrum. Right. And it can be a very 
awkward first conversation. You can be unsure on what language do I use? How do I ask the right questions? What information, you know, is important for me to know and learn so I can make this interaction and communication yes. accessible to mm-hmm. both yeah. parties. Right. So it can be a very stigmatized oh, and absolutely. dangerous mm-hmm. thing to just take everything you see. Yep. And run with it. Yep. Right. And I I was in college when my original diagnosis was Asperger's when I was a child. And when I was in college is when Asperger's was taken out of the DSM, <clears throat> which stands for Diagnostic Statistical Manual, which is the big giant book that psychologists use to diagnose mental health conditions as well as dev- developmental disabilities. Um, and so I was diagnosed with ADHD at a time when that also existed, as well as Asperger's when it existed. In college is when they actually got rid of the, when I was in college is when they got rid of the Asperger's diagnosis and Mm -hmm. lumped it all into, and they created the autism spectrum. Before that, it was, there was three different diagnoses. There was Asperger's, autism, and pervasive developmental disorder. And then they lumped it all into a spectrum, which at the time was hugely and massively controversial, especially in the autistic community. And for a lot of us who felt not autistic enough, we felt that, and there's a lot of problems with the Asperger's slash Aspie community. I will, absolutely. (laughs) But at that time, it was, holy crap, we're going to be erased. And because you're you're removing this diagnosis, a lot of us are going to fall off the criteria to be eligible for this, and we're no longer going to be able to receive services in Mm -hmm. schools, receive services from the government, et cetera. And so it was not only that, you're erasing our entire identity as Aspies. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I was in college when that happened, and it it was massively controversial. I can say now, about 10 years later, that... I do think it's it's a better it's a much better definition of autism now as mm-hmm. a spectrum, and gotcha. we can recognize absolutely that mm-hmm. everything exists on a spectrum, and so this is yeah. just one really cool way to recognize mm-hmm. that. Um, but it really falls into that not disabled enough because a lot of us at that time felt, and it took me about ten years to feel comfortable enough to call myself autistic sure. because my entire youth growing up from age 8 to 18 was you are at, you have Asperger's, you're an Aspie, you're not autistic enough. Mm-hmm. Sure. And now you're removing that. And mm-hmm. so now I'm supposed to call myself this, but I don't feel this. Right. Mm-hmm. Right? And so now I I agree mm-hmm. that it's it's a definitely much better way to define it as sure. a spectrum. Yeah. Um, but at the time, it was very scary for many people. Right. Yeah, that it's just sense. so new to you when you go your whole life having this label that you feel comfortable in, that you feel represents you, and then all of a sudden it's, it's called something else, and it's called right. a word that you felt was not associated with you at all. Mm. That would definitely be a really hard change to make and really, like, and it just, yeah, just kind of hard, like, to think about um, and then you being 10 years younger than me you yeah. didn't you didn't deal with that no yeah when I learned about my autistic identity it was already you know all the discourse was already there it was it's autism it's autistic and not Asperger's and that's how I identified autistic mm-hmm. and another thing that you were saying about um you know not autistic enough and like um certain uh identities being erased like the reason that the spectrum is so much of a better representation yes. of autism is because it is a spectrum and because sure. you can't say high or low functioning to anyone because we all will typically have traits of all different yep. levels of that. Right. And that's why I like to think of it as not like a linear spectrum, yeah. but like a color wheel. Or something yes. Like yeah. And that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we've seen it in the, the in the linear form and then also um, a color um, like not rainbow the, spectrum, like a mm-hmm. main, yeah, exactly a rainbow spectrum, which is really interesting because not only is um, autism on a spectrum, but we also consistently say that disability is on a spectrum. Absolutely, mm-hmm. everything is. Yeah, I think yeah, exactly. I was about to say the human experience, yes. or just <laughs> all of it, everything <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. is on a spectrum. Is a spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. and that's why Definitely. now, ten years later, I love that, mm-hmm. and it, and it, it correlates so well with just disability as a whole, with race, with gender, with religion with all of it it really it falls into that beautifully mm-hmm. and i love that right. yeah absolutely yeah. and just because social security or the federal <laughs> government doesn't put a stamp on you saying that you're disabled yeah. doesn't mean that, that you're, you're not right yep. I, I don't know if anybody's quick enough to look up the definition of disability or disabled 
but it generally fits. Hold, please. I'll get it for you. I didn't know you caught that one. (laughs) (laughs) I say this in our disability awareness training every time. Yeah, because (laughs) when I looked up the definition, I was like, well, this kind of fits everyone. Yeah, right? You know? I I love the ADA definition of disability, that disability is a... uh, Major life, and thing is the term impairment. We like mm-hmm. to say limitation yes. instead, um, but a major life limitation that impacts your daily life activities. Right. So and so that's more. exactly where instead of having a spectrum of, of functioning, right, from high mm-hmm. to low functioning, instead we have a spectrum of capacity, mm-hmm. and everybody's going to have different levels yeah. of capacity. Obviously, I can speak very loudly. <laughs> yes, and, you can. And, no, not <laughs> And very much brain to mouth. Right? Well, other people can't, and mm-hmm. that's okay, right? And even if we apply that not just to disability, but to everything, and the idea of, of what are our different capacities, and yeah. where do we need support in our different lives, right? Yeah, we can do this kindergarten style. Yes. Hey, look, guys, Christmas everybody, <laughs> right, let's First sit down on the, on the <laughs> car carpet here and just realize that everybody has the yes. potential to have a limitation. Yeah. And once you accept that, or a, a difference of an opinion mm-hmm. for that matter, and once we accept that as a, a community of humans, it'll make the world a better place. Yeah. Uh, because then you will ask those uh, great questions that Rebecca was throwing out. Like, hey, what questions can I ask? What mm-hmm. would be offensive to you if I use this term or that? Mm-hmm. And, and once we start asking questions and we gain knowledge, then we can kind of get rid of that whole stigma of, well, you don't look Deaf, mm-hmm. right? You don't. You don't, you don't sound, sound deaf. deaf. Yeah, right. You can hear me right now. <laughs> right. You know. So what do you mean you're deaf? You right. know. And, like, and I know Becca and I can both attest to this that the whole like you don't sound deaf is you don't huge. sound deaf. Yeah. What does you that sound like? Look I don't even deaf. know what that. Why means. can right. you talk so well? You want to talk have vocal cords. It's amazing. <laughs> right. <laughs> And that's another thing as yeah. um, Daniel and Elle were discussing, what is your capability? Yeah. Also mm-hmm. disassociating that capability A does not necessarily equal B. Right. My ability to speak right. does not equal right. my yes. ability to hear. Exactly. Yes. And that so is people love to say that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's so hard to get through to people. Mm-hmm. And I think within the disability realm, another really important factor in consideration is when your diagnosis was made. Yes. Mm-hmm. If you yeah. were born with a disability your parents your guardian they're going to have a huge role Mm -hmm. in shaping that identity you are not necessarily going to be making the same choices for yourself if it happens 20 years down the road for example hearing parents have a deaf baby and that baby is eligible for a cochlear implant they have a decision to make that is going to drastically impact the rest of this child's life. Yeah. And in considering disability within the community, that is one of the huge considerations I want to share with you guys today. Mm-hmm. You know, look at where someone is coming from. Mm-hmm. Their history is full of choices that they may not necessarily got to say yeah i'm down for seven years of speech therapy right. Right. no yeah. and being was pulled not out. down for right. seven years of that and, and being pulled out of classes for the sake of speech therapy yeah. like let me not learn how to read and write or social studies because it's so important for me to speak major yeah. eye roll yeah, yeah. So, exactly yeah. so what disability looks like has so many different components yes. and factors in play yes. and when you're within your own community be supportive of those yeah. people. Yeah. Be supportive of their identity and their label and understand, you know, just because you are a blind person who enjoys basketball does not make you any less valuable to right. your own community. Right. Just because I am a deaf person who cranks up the bass as loud as it possibly goes <laughs> and that I enjoy music does not make me any less deaf. Yeah. I right. love being in your car. I can feel the music. <laughs> <laughs> That's really all that it matters. You can still feel it. Yes. In your soul, man. Yes. Yeah. That was a true Colorado answer. <laughs> right there. Yeah. yeah. So to touch on what Rebecca has just thrown out, uh, Rebecca H., choices. Huge. Um, one thing that I found, we had the opportunity to interview an um, individual that had ran for office here locally. Yes. And I posed the question. I was like, well, why don't we see individuals that are disabled 
in office. Like, you know, how come we don't see a lot of that? Mm-hmm. Luckily, we have Yolanda, yeah, who, she's is, awesome. who is now... She's a blind woman of color right. on our mm-hmm. city council. Uh-huh. She is bomb. Say, can you say that one more time? She blind woman of color on city council. On city. <laughs> right. And so I posed that question to her, and she said, well, we don't see a lot of people trying. They don't come yeah. out. They don't put, it, put, put forth that effort. So to our individuals with living with disabilities, it is also our responsibility to not be afraid yep. to go into these places where individuals may not have the experience with an individual with a disability. And we need to teach them through experience and through just sharing because it's, it's a lot for them to learn. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to give people the uh, the credit for not being well educated in certain areas. <laughs> um, I had to find a really nice way to say that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it is our duty to go to those uh castings to go to those job interviews where we like oh man um, they're not going to want me to do this job because of my disability but we need to go in there and blow them out of the water blow the competition out of the water and show that an individual with a disability can do things further than what you think they can Um, and or it's exactly what you think it is but it's still okay you know (laughs) and it is our duty as well as the uh, I don't want to say opposition but the uh the other side mm-hmm. of the table to put forth the effort to want to learn, to mm-hmm. put ourselves in positions to experience what is it like to be around somebody with a disability? Mm-hmm. Because you will very well catch on that like individuals with disabilities tend to always find a way. Like mm-hmm. we'll find a way Absolutely. to do the job and yeah. we'll probably do it better. I'm not bragging, uh-huh. but we'll probably do it better. <laughs> I would. It's an interesting point because as a person with a disability, when you think about it from like a Darwinism perspective, we had to learn how to adapt to living in a world that is not designed for us. So, heck yes. Yes. (laughs) Mm -hmm. We can do it. I I read an article one time and I say this in basically every training that I give. I read this article that was titled... Hiring disabled people, they are the original hackers. <laughs> and nice. I, I felt like I didn't need to read anything past the title. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. But the title was amazing, yeah. and I quote it all of the time because yeah. it's so true. Right. And it's, you know, disabled people are out there adapting to a world not built for us and figuring it out and thriving in many different beautiful ways. And I love what you said, Daniel, that we need to put ourselves out there. And yeah. sometimes it is scary, and sometimes that takes us confronting our own own internalized ableism, the things that we've been told that we're not enough, either from abled's telling us we're not enough to do this, or other fellow disabled yeah. saying you're not enough to be a part of us. Well, we have to say a big F you to all of them. Mm-hmm. And like, hey, I'm disabled, and I'm beautiful, and yeah. perfect exactly as I am, and I can contribute yeah. to this in a really cool way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a wise man once said, uh, <laughs> one should see things that are and not ask the question why, Aww. but think of the things that are not and say, why not? Oh, I like that. Yeah, make it happen. I really a, like that. It was a rapper yeah. from the yeah. 90s <laughs> yes. named so AZ. So I challenge you. <laughs> you know, I don't really listen to music, so I appreciate right. you quoting it's it It's all good. Me. I got you. That's what I'm here for. Yes. Yeah. And I also want to add to everything you guys are saying, because it's amazing, obviously, to say that we can do all of these things that people say that we can't. Yeah. And I think it's also amazing advocacy to say sometimes we can't as well. And yes. that's okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because... They like I hate the phrase. Um, what is it like? Um, the only disability is about attitude because yep. you can't. Oh, yeah. A person who it's needs a bad. wheelchair to that get is, around that is an awful. Quote. Exactly, they can't. Uh, have if they just a keep smiling at the stairs, at the stairs they're right. not going to turn into a ramp. <laughs> yep. And you can we have crawl, to recognize right? Recognize that as well yep. when we talk no. about these yes. things because we can do anything that we want to do. Right. But sometimes there are access barriers, yes. and sometimes mm-hmm. maybe it's just too painful for us Mm -hmm. to be word. Just something that, you know, like who someone who doesn't need a wheelchair all of the time and the doctors are saying, Hey, you can learn to walk, you should always be walking. What if they don't want to because it's way easier, way more accessible to use a wheelchair to do everything that they need to do and they're gonna have a better quality of life that way. Yeah. So it's really important to recognize both of those things. And I and I think piggybacking off of that that concept of Yes, we can, Mm -hmm. and no, we can't, and that's okay, but also together, Mm -hmm. I think together, and this is the thing I love about working at a center for independent living and and really working across disability spaces for the first time is I get to see this truly lived in action, is I believe that together as a Mm -hmm. disability community, we have all of the abilities Mm 
Yeah. Exactly. Right? And so if we're all together, like there's some people who can walk and some people yeah. who can't. Some like people who can hear and others mm-hmm. who can't. Some people right. who can see and others who can't. Some neurotypical people and some neurodivergent people, right? Some people who have healthy bodies and some people who have chronically ill bodies. But together, we really fill in all of those blanks. Yes. And so if you hired a diverse panel of disabled people to work in whatever business it was, you would have different capacities mm-hmm. and you'd have somebody who's able to do all of the different things. Mm-hmm. Right. But still with, like, brilliant crip wisdom. Right. Yes. To elaborate on that a little bit more, I also feel that in your development of your disability, you have to learn other abilities to Mm -hmm. compensate. Mm -hmm. So, for example, for me, I am so observant of my surroundings because I'm paranoid I'm missing something. Sure. So that allows me to be a very detailed orientated person and that is a skill and a strength that I have and I don't feel I would have it otherwise yeah. without my disability yeah. mm-hmm. so my disability provides me with other abilities yeah. so yes. all those employers out there <laughs> you know yeah. think about that yeah, yes. and I, I can personally attest to Def Becca's executive functioning skills <laughs> oh, yes. they're amazing they are amazing <laughs> I have none of them and I I love you <laughs> for helping me with all of the things <laughs> And I totally agree with that. There's so many things and so many, like, interests that I have and talents that I have that I definitely would not have if I wasn't autistic. Right? As, you know, we um, autistic people say, like, we would not be the person we are if we weren't autistic because it's Mm -hmm. literally the way that our brain is beautifully wired. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. For me, as a deaf autistic person, I've recently been thinking about how those two disabilities interact with each other, Mm -hmm. right? And so I recently wrote about the perks I find in being both deaf and autistic. And one of my favorite ones was talking about as a deaf person, my biggest barrier is access to information, right? Like you were saying that you need to be consciously aware, but also as an autistic person, I will perseverate and have special interests, right? Mm -hmm. And I will not give up. So even though one disability prevents me from accessing information. If I want that information as an autistic person, <laughs> I will it out. hunt it down. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I relate. Yeah. And when you acknowledge the beautiful things that your disability has provided towards your identity and to who you are as a human, and when you begin to feel that pride, you know, that's when you step up and you become a leader within your community oh, yeah. and you encourage other people to be a part of that community yeah. no matter where they are on that spectrum because that's what builds strength definitely and then that's what portrays us yeah as a family yeah i love my disabled family (laughs) we need the oh Oh, (laughs) group hug moment (laughs) well you know going back to um something that that ella had, had, had talked about about what society says you can and can't do based off of your disability so I am sure that because you guys are such hearing passing people mm-hmm. in, in, in a podcast that is really essentially built for hearing people, mm-hmm. you have, I have two deaf people that are, <laughs> are sitting here having a conversation with us yeah. and, um, and that society would be like, you did what, <laughs> you know, they're deaf. How can they hear you? And we both and sign fluently in our major like majorly active within the deaf community too. Right. Deaf right. people are dynamic. Yes, they are. <laughs> and so really understanding that a limitation is only what you put in front of, of a person or what and and that they accept. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the limitation that that you guys have a, um are deaf is not really a an, necessarily a limitation because society will throw it up in front of you and you can either choose to accept it mm-hmm. and go, okay, I'm, now I'm going to limit myself or you know what? You don't know me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to push it aside mm-hmm. and I'm going to con- con- continue forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And keep fighting to remove those barriers, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the difference between saying the only disability is a bad attitude and recognizing that we can continue to fight and dismantle mm-hmm. those barriers. Mm-hmm. And, right, if we're, if we're going back to the metaphor of the wheelchair user, mm-hmm. smiling at the stairs that are never going <laughs> to yeah. become a ramp. I would love to meet that person that said that quote. <laughs> And completely right? unpack but like, that rationale. Within that so metaphor, I, I think that. about Ed Roberts. And I think mm-hmm. about how Ed Roberts right. was told, you can't go to UC Berkeley because you are too disabled. And we can't provide employable. you with this access. Yeah. And he mm-hmm. also gave them a big F you. <laughs> and he started 
like the entire disability rights movement. Mm-hmm. I mean, like mm-hmm. some credit Centers to white men, but <laughs> also recognize he had privilege to do that. At the same time, like I civil love you, Elle. <laughs> love you, <Mandel. laughs> Centers for Independent Living exists because this white man right. used his privilege to push forward and right. break down barriers for disabled people. Right, even yeah. though he had a he had a, a marginalized identity yeah. as exactly. well. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So that is where I find <laughs> our white male counterparts yes. are great is if they're placed in a Solidarity. position to mm-hmm. understand, yes. you yeah. know, and, and I find that it's more effective when they either have lived through it themselves mm-hmm. or have somebody very, very close to them to live through yeah. mm-hmm. uh, marginalization. Right. They tend to be very effective yes. if they can take that information that they gain from the situation and apply it to their future. Yep. Yeah, and that's where we, as as multiply diverse people with different types of marginalized identities, we have to relate with other people yes. and other marginalized identities instead of our privileged parts. Because yeah. if we relate with that, we can use our privilege to push right. forward and right. break down more of those barriers. Right. right. Exactly. Everybody, like Ed Roberts. Yeah. Right, exactly. Huh. Everybody has their privilege. There's some privileges to yeah. being blind. Yeah. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I can totally too. ignore people when they're waving to me. <laughs> <laughs> like me. Like, I didn't even see you. <laughs> 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 But you can't pull that I didn't hear you. That one's my go-to. Right, exactly. Yeah. Right. But I was screaming your name. Oh. It just happened. I've, I've also waved vigorously at you. Oh, really? Didn't work, my obviously. Bad. Hey, well, you, you talked to me on my left side, so I'm worried. Gotcha. Yeah, it's all good. totally. I've had people walk up and just, you know, just stand there and wait for me to acknowledge them, and I'm like... What? Where it's, have you come from? It's really Where funny to watch. I do that Make twice a day. <laughs> you never acknowledge me. Yeah, let me know you're there. And it's just like, and then and then they're, they they act like they're hurt or something. <laughs> it does Aww. hurt when you don't acknowledge me. Well, it Able would be helpful tears. if you made a noise so I'd know you're there. I will definitely it's not make like a loud noise. The pressure changes in a room when someone enters it. It does. It does. I can't you just got to close your other eyes. <laughs> yes. They're hopping time. As a deaf individual, where I forget that other people can hear. <laughs> yeah. So Daniel you know, I go into a room yes. that people and you can just start hear. signing, and you're like, oh, that's right. Yeah. They I'm like, hear. Guys, hear. like, slow down. What? What? You know, I had that experience with the three of you. Yes. And I'm like, I, I can't. Someone use words. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then and so I mean I can catch like some signs and I'm kind of like tracking and then I get lost and then, <laughs> then it's just like okay you know what I mean just check my email <laughs> see you gotta they'll put yourself in position give me a yes. summary yeah, yeah. Put someone will say something and then it'll trigger me to look back I'm like whatever and then like vice versa in this podcast <laughs> like I'm moving my head around all crazy I around everyone's it. mics being like okay who's talking now <laughs> what topic are we on we're five topics ahead yeah. wait this that but you know what it's not gonna be perfect right no, but it never who is. cares if it's Definitely. perfect you're right. trying what right. is perfect and that's what yeah. counts right yeah. I might have to punch the wall a couple of times in order to open the door <laughs> 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 but I make it happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's all that matters. Getting right. through the door. <laughs> right. And Whether one way or the other. Yes. Because if I can't really find the door handle, I'm walking Never through it. Up. It's really fun to work in this environment with all these different disabilities because we can, first of all, have these conversations. And right. I can say, um, there was one time I went to an event um, where Elle and Rebecca were both there, and I almost tried calling both of them because I was lost. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you remember that. But, so we have moments like that and we also learn all these different ways to communicate with different people and Mm -hmm. like what everyone needs and I know that if I just stand next to Becca on her blind side she won't see me (laughs) and I have to get her attention I know that I probably can't just yell down the hall (laughs) Ella Rebecca you know you gotta wave (laughs) it's really fun like in my experience the short time that I've been here with you guys just like learning 
all of those different things. Yeah. And I also haven't been exposed to that many disabled people in my life either. So mm-hmm. it's really cool just, like, even for myself, just, like, learning about the disabilities as well. Right. And as we were saying earlier, just seeing what that looks like in everyday life. Right. Yeah. And yeah. seeing that, you know, you, um, Elle and Rebecca both really like to speak, they have told me. And <laughs> yes. then SimCom, and then we can also have, you know, silent signing conversations. And that's just yeah. normal. This is what life looks like. To yeah. Be yes. disabled. And it's really cool to watch. And, and there are times where... Um, where I, I forget that other people can hear, and I'm, you know, I walk into an office and Elle's there, and I have to wave at her, and everybody's like, "Oh, Becca's here," and you know, because I'm just so used to knowing, okay, she has a cochlear impact right. in, implant that she doesn't turn on until someone forces her to turn it on. <laughs> it's true. We have to speak to her, um, and so you know, understanding that before I walk in a room, or oh, is Elle there? Okay, let me go up and wave at her, and mm-hmm. then pause. Before, just so that she can tell me, okay, I can hear you now. <laughs> um, it's really, it's really important to understand that because then with Matthew, I don't have to wait and right. and wait for him to tell me he can hear me. He's not going to hear me, mm-hmm. right. and so it's just easier for me to just walk in, wave at him, so he can look at me and make sure he can see my lips, mm-hmm. so he, that we can have an exchange. So, just understanding a person as an individual and yes. their needs. In, to ensure that that communication, that connection is happening. Definitely. Instead of the broad, you know, scope of, you know, uh, every deaf person sounds like Elle and Rebecca. Right. right. Or every blind person is like Daniel that can see a, a certain part of, uh, you know, his sight. And I 42 need to get in, point font yeah. and above. Yeah. And I have to get <laughs> like a certain part of his, 97. Yeah. I'm like, I have to get a certain part of his, his sight so he can see me. I mean, just understanding those nuances is really important, but... You know, but that's a person, and mm-hmm. every person has different likes and dislikes. It's very similar to yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Every person has a, a an access need, and it may and it can look similar based off of disability, or it can be very different yep. based yeah. off of disability. Yeah, yep. and and when we think about like again that spectrum of humanity, and even removing disability from it, you know, we go home for the holidays. Just speaking about that because that's what's happening right now. Mm-hmm. You go home for the holidays and you know that your mom needs this, and your dad needs this, and aunt needs this and uncle needs this right and and like grandparents need this children need this and understanding that people are different and have different needs but we can if we can do that on a micro level within yeah. our own families without disability why can't we do that when we include disability too right. and understanding right. like yep. oh becca can't hear and needs me to make sure that i'm close enough that she can see my lips and yeah. if i have any signing skills add that in right and that you know Blind Becca can't see on her right side, mm-hmm. and you know that. And Amber Nicole is autistic, and Daniel can't see because he's blind. Like mm-hmm. understanding different yeah. needs, mm-hmm. right? And then right. we can all get along mm-hmm. and right. just meet people where they are. Right. right. So, mm-hmm. I just a thought, mm-hmm. and it's dangerous when I think. <laughs> I love, I love the danger. No. <laughs> Be careful. It's the, the danger scares me. Yeah. You lay the danger game out. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is about to get real dangerous. No, I'm just yeah. so would it make sense for our listeners or individuals that are out there in the community to get to know the person? Yes. First. Yes. And you will automatic automatically learn about the disability. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, if you take the time to get to know the person, Definitely. the yes. disability, it will kind of just fall into place. So if you're kind of mm-hmm. like, I don't know what to ask or what to say or do um if you just stick around for a little bit yes. and not treat me like i have a disease right. Right. then you'll see and you'll yeah. find the places or you can ask hey um i see that you just missed your watch three times on the table <laughs> do you need some assistance yeah. you know uh, take time to get to can know I the people absolutely guide you to where it is or yeah. can i hand it to you is yeah and, and one thing i've seen recently circulating in in disability land about that type of topic is absolutely get to know the person and understand that um and at the same time if if you're interacting with a disabled person and building a relationship with them don't get annoyed that they're going to talk about disability a lot often yes. because it, it significantly impacts their life right yeah. so if you're building that, that relationship yeah. yes yeah, sure and and understanding like if i'm having a friendship with you amber nicole mm-hmm. um like removing my own autism from it mm-hmm. you're going to talk about being autistic because it's a huge part of who you are exactly and like and that then teaches me your access needs mm-hmm. right. yeah. 
And personally, I love having those conversations. Yes, like to those too. listening, like don't go to a disabled person on the street and ask them personal right. questions. <laughs> do not do that. There's but, your disclaimer. Right. Yes. And it's not anyone's job to teach you everything you need to know about their personal life and their disability. But personally, I like having those conversations and I actually really love when it is really awkward and people are like, I don't know what the right terminology is. I don't Mm -hmm. want to say anything hurtful because that just to me shows that they really care and that they want to get it right. Right. And if they're saying things like that, like, Oh, I don't know what the right word is, but here's what I'm trying to say. Then I can say, okay, yeah, it's actually, you'd want to say it this way. Um, and then we move on Mm -hmm. and then they learn. And I like talking about disability because I just love, um, spreading awareness and uh, like we've been saying this whole time like letting people know what real life yeah. disabled like, is yeah. right. um so i think it's really nice when people can have those like really honest conversations where there's mm-hmm. room to mess up and be corrected yes. right yeah definitely it's, and, a, it's amazing and that a person will will do that yes. so we'll, we'll take the the information and not feel like mm-hmm. they've been attacked mm-hmm. and be like oh right. oh i didn't know that i didn't realize right and yeah. some people i meet i'll you know say yeah i'm autistic and they'll say uh, no you're not because uh, <laughs> you don't look autistic <laughs> and you know that person could have just said oh really i don't know much about autism but i've seen it portrayed like this mm-hmm. and that's or tell me about it from yeah yeah or even like i thought autism looked like this exactly Mm -hmm. and i'd be like actually no here's what it's like for me and it looks different in every single person you know and if they could just take the time to step back and not just like tell me what they think they know and we could have a conversation about it we'd get a lot more done (laughs) definitely and along with that i like to add don't assume just ask i'm not going to assume that daniel needs me to open the door for him please do every person in the world when you see me coming you open that door for me i I want rose petals no candles the music start sage to clear my path make sure the energy's right energy's right need all of that whatever Mm-hmm. Music. You know, you know that that's not happening on my end. <laughs> I was wondering what those rules fiddle. Yeah, not happening. So, and uh, I just want to throw out there too to our listeners, uh, the group that is here today speaking, we're a very kind group of people. <laughs> Don't think that every individual with a disability is as kind as we are. It's true. Yes. Um, if you choose to ask a question, you might want to think about it. Be prepared oh, for yes. the answer. Because the answer could come in a way that you may not be prepared for. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very true. <laughs> so, be careful um, in your and also, yes. the five of us all work in advocacy and yeah. education. Our jobs so are on the line. That, like, we, we literally do this, like, as a living, but also in our personal lives. So, so right. we're used to it. Not everyone takes on that advocacy right. role, nor does everyone right. have to. Right. Exactly. Right. And to That's the, really important. Yeah. And to the individuals with disabilities, understand that we have to give credit to those that are not mm-hmm. as as articulate mm-hmm. as others and yep. will ask those questions that may even be hurtful. They might catch you on a day where you were mm-hmm. just told that your disability is not going to get better. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, hey. Tell me about your disability. Right. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Are you, are you ready? Right. You better know yeah. where right. someone is within their journey yes. of self-acceptance either. Yes. It's taken me a long time to no longer hide the fact that when I go into public, I use hearing aids yeah. or to be able to speak openly about having a chronic illness. Right. And when you finally get to that part where you can talk about it and like we've been doing joking around about yes. it, mm-hmm. it's a really beautiful thing. It but is. it is not the standard. Right. Yeah. right. And, and just shout out to Becca, Deaf Becca, for being my my crony doula and <laughs> I got me you. all of the ways. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> And again, this is a space where we all know each other, we're all comfortable with each other, right. we're all very yeah. open, and we know that we like to talk about yep. it and joke around about it. It's a safe place for all of us, and that's why we can have these kinds of conversations, right. too. Mm-hmm. That's what I love so much about mm-hmm. us. Me, yeah. too. And if you are outside of the community, before joking, please yes. <laughs> assess the situation yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Know your audience. And your relationship with those people. Because we make yeah. some horrible jokes. I know in the blind community, we make some... Really, <laughs> really bad jokes um, that if someone that was not blind said it, it could be a little hurtful. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We can poke fun at ourselves. Right. Yes. <laughs> so with that, I think we'll close up this conversation, but invite uh, the listeners to come back and, and listen to our, uh, our following conversations as we have them. And um, it's really cool to have disability awareness conversations, but then also understand that um, 
the disability conversations aren't just making somebody aware. It's really like, this is what life looks like. Mm -hmm. And, um, and being able to share life experiences in a way where it's realistic. It's not what is portrayed in the media. Right. So, um, but thank you guys for coming and talking to us. Thanks for having us. You're going to come back, right? (laughs) I love you guys. Conversations. (laughs) There is a lot to be said about this topic. (laughs) We definitely have to revisit it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And to our listeners, whether you are disabled or abled, you are always enough. (laughs) That is so true. That's a really good ending. Yes. (laughs) And I'm not quite sure what the sign they're doing right now. I was like, what? Oh, I thought it was like they were really doing ET. <laughs> Just having a moment. Oh, okay. There's oh. A, they're, okay, they're, they're we're having gonna, a moment. We're going to move to Utah so I can marry Becca as well as my husband. Oh, good for you. Oh, my Love this woman. That's, that's Our next you. topic will be... <laughs> Polygamy. Right. I don't think our job will allow us. I don't know. I don't know. In the disabled community, we have to do some research on that. Yes. I wonder what polygamy looks like in the disabled community. <gasps> Woo. Time to explore. That's some. <laughs> we definitely need to find this out. It's interesting. I like it. Hmm. I missed a word. Polygamy. Polygamy. Oh, I thought we were talking about ligament. <laughs> 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 and I was like, "How did that yes, come into play so quickly?" I just like, yes. what spelled that, and I w- and I didn't know that you were trying to clarify what was said. I thought that you were just signing ligaments. And I was like, no, I was like, what are we doing? <laughs> ligament what? I love deaf people. <laughs> I was like, I'm trying to watch this happen. I was like, what did she just finger spell? <laughs> ligament. I'm so glad you asked. But um, so in order for you to listen to us, continue to either like and share the pod the podcast that you're listening on, if it's Apple iTunes or Spotify. Spotify. Hopefully we get on title. That's I gotta throw this out there. It's black owned uh, streaming service. Oh, okay. Well you better work on that. Yeah. I think it's not hard to do. We can just You make that happen it. for us. All right. All right. Nice. We'll see how he does. I won't. Well yeah, report back. Maybe. So to end on the note that Rebecca gave us a minute ago before we went off, um, everyone <laughs> is enough. Yes, everyone is yes. enough. Definitely. Yes. So in order to actually come down and see us at the Independent Center. Don't come see us. Yes, come see us. No, that's we kind are, of weird. Well, Daniel Seven. won't see you, yeah. Yeah. so right. it's fine. Well, I'll see you, but if I don't want to talk to you, I'll act like I don't. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And I'll be walking by, and regardless of what side, I'll ignore you. Nice. So if you want to come and experience see us, that. experience that. Our, our address is 729 South Day Hone in Colorado Springs. Um, you can go to our website. Um, www.theindependentcenter.org yes. and you can always call us um, don't call L or Rebecca because deaf girls don't talk on the phone that's not <laughs> wait them, that's a stereotype email yeah. them <laughs> video phone oh, them deaf girls text us <laughs> text them when you come wave and knock yes <laughs> <laughs> but actually physically speaking on the phone it doesn't happen it doesn't no <laughs> no for real no. they have email addresses that yeah. will happily provide in the um in the even with the cochlear implant this is like, educational right like i can call becca when my car is which you know, is on the side of the, fr- the freeway and I'm freaking out and I don't have to hear a lot of what she says. It's and a one-way conversation. Yes. <laughs> so you warn Primarily. the other person, hey, <laughs> don't say anything. <laughs> Just listen. Yeah. The, and then when you go to that. hang up, it's really that. awkward. And it's like, <laughs> all right, five, four, three, two, one, bye. <laughs> I'm hanging up. I hope you're hanging up because yeah. I don't know what's happening. But exactly. So, yeah. I think we'll have to talk about yeah, we that. We already have to talk about it. Yes. I'm so sorry for messing up the wrap-up, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to close, man. <laughs> we should do trying to close for like five minutes. This look on my face is like, really? Death goodbyes. It doesn't, you'll, get, you'll be able to get all of that. <laughs> because it still never happens. Does the people that implant <laughs> have Bluetooth connected? We'll totally give you all those answers okay. at the next podcast. All right. I got a lot of questions. I'm going to write them down. Now he's like, what? Daniel's very curious. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> anyway. Thank you guys for coming and talk to us. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you both for having me. I'm Rebecca Michael. And I'm Daniel Ratcliffe. Thank you very much.